So here we are, and we're going to do our apple, paint our apple. We've got our canvas, our paints, our brushes, everything we need. I'll go through them slowly with you. First of all, our apple. I have a red apple. So what I've done is I've very carefully looked at the colors that are in this apple, and I've tried to get colors that I think are in here. So you'll be amazed how many colors you actually will find. So I've taken yellow ochre and light red which is also primary red deep red red oxide deep yellow lemon yellow the lemon yellow you can see is a lot lighter than the deep yellow so we'll use that for highlighting and i've got a light green which i think might be a little bit too light I'm thinking of it for these the green background colors we'll see how that goes and I've got a little box that I'm going to put my apple into so that it's a nice height make sure you're sitting nice and straight so you get a good view of what you're doing then I've got my little Tupperware lid to mix my paints on you've got your wash I've got a little chalk pastel you can also use pencil if you want to it's really not a big deal I use a chalk pastel because you can paint it out nice and easily and if you make a mistake you can rub it up your finger so you don't have a lot of different pencil lines hanging around then I've also got a whole bunch of brushes these are my personal brushes my favorite brushes you can find some really nice brushes that are addicted to art you can just order like a variety and you'll see which ones you're going to be the most comfortable with. I've got some flat ones in different sizes. I've got some round ones. I've got a short flat one as well. And I've got some water and I've got a little piece of roller towel as well that I'm going to use to wipe my brushes off. And of course my trusty water thing, water spray. So let's start off just by putting Oops, we'll start there. <laughs> Just going to use a little bit of each color. And just randomly around. I like to work around the outside and you can always mix into it and you can mix colors together as well. Lots of air bubbles in these tubes. Always with your acrylics make sure that your lids are nicely when you're not using it because acrylic does dry quite fast and like oils which dry over quite a period of time so they don't have that worry Keep it nearby so if you do need to top up with anything that's around just spray it lightly just so that you keep it nice and wet okay I'll put that to one side sorry getting my brushes together right now when we look at the apple I'm going to look at it from this angle because we're going to be looking directly straight to it. You'll see that it's not as round mm -hmm. as what people would say. So I'm going to just choose one angle that I think is going to work for me and I like this particular angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and transfer the shape onto my canvas. So I'm going to put it down on my block. Pull up a chair. And I'm going to start. So what I normally do is I will do almost like what they call a contour drawing where you just look at the shape with your eye and you don't look really at your canvas. You're just going to follow the shape, the outline shape of your apple with your pencil so that you get an idea of the shape. So it goes, whoops, canvas that way. I want the light to come from that side. So I'm going to start with the top there's a bit of a bump at the top and then it comes out and then it goes around and round and up again 
see that it doesn't match, so I'm going to keep going around until I'm happy with the shape. As I say, with the charcoal or the um, pastel, not the oil pastel, I'm just going to chalk pastel, you can really work it until you're happy with the shape and the positioning. That's way too clumpy. The positioning of your apple. Very important with, that I personally feel is that there's no right or wrong. This is your art piece. This is something that you have to enjoy. So it might not look anything like the apple when you're done. So all I'm doing is giving you some direction on how you're going to do your painting. But as I said, it might look nothing like it. So the idea is to enjoy yourself and to relax and not to make a perfect picture perfect apple it's going to be something kind of that looks like an apple <laughs> so I'm just going to give you basically the tools on how to do it and then you can decide how you want to do it at the end of the day so I'm quite happy with that it's a nice shape and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the yellow ochre because I think that is a pretty good base color for it. I'm going to just go over the coloring in where I painted. I'm going to use a thicker brush as well because then I can just um, apply a lot more paint in one go. What you can do as well is you this is going to be your darker side, so I'm going to use a bit of my red oxide and make it a little bit darker on that side. And underneath as well, because then that's where the shadow is going to be. So you think about it quite logically. If a light is hitting here, that's going to be your lighter side, that's going to be your darker side, and where will the light not really hit it? I have a definite space problem here. This is my art station that I've been using for acrylic pouring up until now. So, still trying to get my bearings on what I'm doing here. So what I'm doing now is on the lighter side, I'm adding a little bit of my primary yellow. And the light lemon yellow as well, which is a very, very nice highlighting color. And then looking at my apple, if you look at the the inside here this is where I am now so if I tip it like that you can see better so this is quite a bit darker this is quite a bit lighter so I will go in there for the lighter color remember this is just your base you still want to work on that on doing your details and your shading and all that kind of thing a bit darker towards the top. So let's just keep shading that in. And I'm going to mix a bit of the red as well so we know where we are. Just basically for here so we see where the top is. We don't lose track of where we are. I'm going to need a bit more yellow ochre. I'll put some more here because I've now mixed the red in that one. And give it a spritz. And you'll see I, I'm not cleaning my brush in between. I'm just going to keep it going because there are so many colors that I'm mixed in an apple anyway so it doesn't really matter if you want to keep your color areas really clean um, then you can clean your brush off in between but I like to kind of pick up 
the other colors here and there and mix it around and make it all um, kind of make its own areas like happy mistakes like they like Bob Ross always says and if you know Bob Ross it's an excellent painter you should watch him if you are interested in oil painting but he always says oh yeah happy mistakes which is awesome because I like happy mistakes they sometimes come out the best okay I'm still busy with the base coat if you find that your paint is starting to dry a little bit you can take your bottle just give it a squirt squish squirt squeezy squirt and keep applying it until we are finished with our base so there's your basic shape with your base color right now what we're going to do is we're going to add the red and if you look at the red you'll see that it's some of it are nice um, clean sorry <laughs> some clean strokes and then this little brush like little dapples so it's not exactly perfectly um, red so we'll try and do something like that The nice thing with acrylic as well is that if you find that you make a mistake, you know, oh, that's way too dark, you can always just go over it again, take it out. If you find that, um, if you're going over it too often and you find that sometimes the paint starts coming off as well, just give it some time to dry. And then once it's dry, you start again. Turns out I've been using this brush quite a lot. So then now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little like tapping brush strokes I could call it. So that you get that nice dappled look that you've got there on, on the apple. I'm trying with your darker red now go to the other side where it's in the shadow. And there are a couple of areas where it's slightly darker on this side as well. If you're finding that it's too solid, then you can always go over it again with more. That's the yellow ochre. And then here I'm going to do a bit more of the bright yellow. Oh, sorry, not the bright yellow, that's the, the standard yellow. And just keep going over and over and over until you're happy with how it's looking now the one thing we've forgotten of course is the green so i'm going to put some on my brush and then kind of dab it off again so that it's not too much on the brush because it's quite a bright color and just put it on at an angle to make it look like it's going around that will help with the shape of it and then I'm going to bring this color up to the back and I'm just going to wipe off a little bit of excess paint that you can use some of your paper towel just wipe that off and I think I'm actually going to go with a slightly thinner brush. And what I'd like to do now is take off a piece of hair. I'm using the red oxide. I'm going to put that in the middle here. And then just try to bring it out from the middle. Here's a good example. Don't like that anymore. So wipe that off. And I'm going to go with a bit of yellow ochre and bring it in from the outside to kind of tone that down a bit. 
and now what's worrying me here is I'm losing that line so go with a darker red and just bring that line back and I'm bringing the red out so that it looks almost like it's a circle here and then this one comes kind of more straight on that side then you've got more green on the inside here so as you can see basically you're going to be doing a lot of layering of different colors until until it looks right for you this is your painting and you must decide when you're happy with it and what you like you just keep on using these colors over and over and over keep looking at your apple does that look kind of right to you or do you want to maybe change something that's the lovely thing about acrylic is that you can keep changing it as you go along so here we go just going to tap off a little bit get some texture going and we want to then also add some more of the green front here going back to my old thick brush you can see it's kind of blending in quite a bit I'm not sure if you can see when I add the green it's blending in so what you would probably have to do is wait for it to dry a little bit so that you can add colors without it blending too much because it does you do want to have some kind of standing out I'm going to add some yellow in the front here it's really good to do as many layers as you can because when it dries when the light hits it from different angles your all the different colors will start coming out as well so that's also quite cool Okay, now I'm going to go over it a bit with some more dark here to make it look more like it's in the shade. And then I'm going to put some dark red over the, the red oxide. So we're keeping the red in as well. I'll do a couple of strokes of the green just to make it show through. Okay, so that's the darker side just wipe off my brush now I'm going to use this very bright yellow for the highlight on the other side and you don't have to blend it in you can leave it as a solid piece of paint like that which I think actually can look quite nice you can blend it in as you're going around then when you blend it in go with a slightly lighter red so that you're always bringing out some of the red again because it is a red apple and just mix it up and you pick up some of the yellow you can bring it around here in the front as well just keep layering and layering your colors until you're happy with the effect I'm going to now use a thin round brush because I want to work a little bit here I'm going to use some of the ochre not the ochre sorry the um, red oxide in the shade there and I'm going to put some more red here just so that it contrasts more and then just scoop, scooch it out a bit so that it blends nicely and I also like to as well when you're doing your strokes try and do your strokes in the direction that the apple's going so instead of going straight down do it at an angle so that all your brush strokes is going to give the impression of a round apple 
I'm going to go here with the green at the very top and then just smush it in. Again, because I'm using a dirty brush with all the other colors, it, it just automatically blends so nicely together. So a little touch of yellow in here. So the little bits of red that are in the brush will come through and it just works very nicely together, I think. And I think this is basically your apple. You can go back afterwards if you want to and you can add some little dots. You can see there's dots here. I can't do it right now because the, the paint is too wet. But you can see there's little tiny dots there. I would do that with maybe with your yellow. And um, yeah, so there we go. I hope you've enjoyed that. I'll see you soon. Bye.